Happy Easter. Thank you for choosing to worship at Advent this morning. We've now come through the dark days of Lent, have mourned, kept vigil, and now we celebrate the risen Christ. Our service this morning will include a number of special pieces of music and contributions by both Bishops Susan and Mike. We will also have communion, so please have your bread and cup handy. We'll take a moment of quiet centering as we prepare ourselves for worship. And our service will begin with the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgive us, forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word you created the world, calling forth light, life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is number 365, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Mine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou who death has won. Angels in bright raiment roll the stone away. Keep the folded grave close where the body lay. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou war death hast won. Lord Jesus meets thee, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets thee, scatters fear and gloom. Let his church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For the Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death has won. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of Peace. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. This is the peace of victory, Lord.
Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
reading is from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows us no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. <clears throat> that message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the second reading is from 1 Corinthians, verses 1 to 11, chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. On Easter Sunday, this is really all that needs to be said. But a sermon that leaves it at that would be a little bit short, and perhaps not what you expected. John's Gospel story of the resurrection has some similarities to the other three Gospels, but it's also very different. John tends to be that way. In John's Gospel, there is a lot that we could look at. We could talk about the foot race between Peter and the beloved disciple, and what they did and did not do. They came, they saw, and they left. We could contrast the events recorded in the other Gospels, but I'd like to concentrate on Mary. This Mary is one of several Marys in our scripture. We have Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary, the mother of James, and Mary, sister of Martha. But this Mary is Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. This Mary has a special relationship with Jesus. One of our first clues to the relationship is her name. Magdalene meant tower in Aramaic. The idea is that Mary probably came from an area near Tiberias with a tower. When she decided to follow Jesus and remain with the disciples, she acquired what we might call a nickname. She is named for the tower where she'd come from. We see throughout the Gospels that Jesus calls those closest to him by nicknames. It's clear from our Gospels, and John in particular, that Mary has a special relationship with Jesus. She was independent, choosing to follow Jesus. Her name is not tied to a male relative. She's acting on her own. This probably meant that she was a woman of some means. It seems that this Mary, Magdalene, 
was a leader among the women who followed Jesus. When we meet her in Jerusalem, she clearly had a special and significant role in the story of Jesus. She is one of the women at the crucifixion. She is with the other women watching from a distance, faithful to the end. And it is Mary Magdalene who has an important role to play after Jesus' death. She is the one who goes to the garden to care for the dead. She has a ministry of care. It is Mary Magdalene who discovers that the body is missing. It is Mary who goes to the disciples to tell them that the body is missing. And it is Mary who remains at the tomb weeping when Peter and the other disciple return home. The church did not leave Mary like John did. The first to encounter the risen Christ, an intimate of Jesus, a member of God's family. The church did a Mary mashup, and Mary Magdalene became a fallen woman who becomes a penitential role model. In John's Gospel, Mary is apostle to the apostles. She sees, touches, and believes. The church made her a prostitute who weeps and washes Jesus' feet and anoints him with myrrh. The church's Mary mashup added Mary of Bethany into the mix. It took until 1969 to untangle this and make Mary Magdalene separate again. Mary Magdalene has always been popular, even as the penitential role model of the fallen woman who loves the most. A very popular figure in art, an intriguing figure in scripture, an intimate of Christ, a leader of the women who follow. It is the scene in the garden that is so significant in John's Gospel. It may be one of the most intimate and tender scenes in all of our scripture. Mary is weeping, and then we have the addition of angels. John identifies them as angels, human-looking individuals dressed in white. How do we know that they are angels? In scripture, angels are messengers of God. These angels speak to her and ask why she is weeping. And once she answers, John lets his readers in on a secret. Jesus is there, but Mary doesn't recognize him. She is mourning, she's confused, and she does not recognize Jesus. But he knows her and calls her by name. It is in this moment when her name is called that she recognizes him and clings to him and calls him Rebuni. John's Gospel has Mary speak Aramaic, which makes this scene feel so authentic. Mary is known, called by name, part of the family. Mary, like Jesus, is a child of God, called by name. We know how much it means to be known and called by name. As a child, I used to watch a television program called Romper Room. At the end of the show, the host would take a hand mirror and look into it and call out names. I desperately wanted to hear my name called. I wanted to be named and included. I wanted to be part of that community. We all want this. As a community that follows Jesus, we know how important it is to call people by name to enfold them in community, to know, name those we encounter in here and out there. It's important to speak names. In our Easter community, when we speak people's names, we include them in community, both human and divine. God knows us by name, God calls us by name, and we so want to hear our names called. But we have a further commission as an Easter people. We are called to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. We have a duty, an obligation, and a command to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. To speak up and out when we see injustice, inequality, racism, sexism, ageism, cruelty, ignorance, and hate. It is our task to call the names of all those who are wounded or hurt in any way. Because we know that God is calling their names 
as well as our own. Mary Magdalene, alone and weeping at the tomb, suddenly called by name and is filled with wonder. Mary Magdalene, commissioned to go to the disciples and tell them what has happened in the garden. And so today we say with Mary Magdalene, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, and we believe. Amen. Easter Sunday, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 104 in your hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve, especially those we name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our calling and our joy to give thanks and praise to you, O Holy One. You summon forth new life from the silence of the grave, an abundant hope where none was to be found. And so with all the living things in the earth itself, with the women at the tomb, the first witnesses of the resurrection, and with all your people of every time and place, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. beyond our knowing, for creatures great and small, and for the wondrous web of life into which we have been woven. We give thanks that, in your wisdom, you create all people in your image, yellow and brown, black and white, calling us to be caretakers of one another and of your world. In each generation you deliver us through the flood, bring us forth from bondage, guide us through the wilderness, sustain us in exile, and call us toward your land of promise. You sent us Jesus, our brother and Lord, who embodied your will, who reveals your heart, and who teaches us what it means to be fully human and fully alive. On the night in which he allowed himself to be handed over, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his followers, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and offered it to his followers, saying, Take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood offered for you and for all people. Do this to remember me. So on this day, in the season of resurrection and new life, we remember. We remember all whose blood is poured out in violence in its countless forms. We remember all who offer up their lives in service to others and to you. And most of all, we remember the new life of the risen Christ into which you call us this day. Pour out your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be filled with your grace. And by your grace, fill us with the resurrected life of Christ that we may be living symbols of your new life for all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray.
to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
Our sending song this morning is number 376, Thine is the Glory. See you next Sunday.